Hello, Hornets, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, please be aware I, uh, I accidentally got interrupted uh, during the first part, and I did not want to redo it. So I'm going to start right where I left off from our pretest number three. Um, and I had mentioned that I would be giving you the formulas uh, for the half angle. So you are going to want to uh, just recognize that these are the ones that I will be giving you. I will also uh, not give you the sum product, sum and difference, uh, and the double angle identities. So just please be aware of that. Uh, the sum uh, identities uh, here go to the double angle on that side. And all we're doing is just going back and forth, uh, having alpha and beta being the same for our sum identities. And just in case, um, I'll write these here for you. We have the uh, cosine uh, cosine of A plus B is the cosine of A sine of B. <laughs> okay, I'm making an error now. I got flustered. Uh, cosine of A, cosine of B, uh, and then we have the opposite sign, sine of A, sine of B, and the cosine of A minus B is the cosine of A, cosine of B, plus the sine of A, sine of B. The other two is the tangent of A plus B. That is the tangent of A plus the tangent of B divided by 1 minus tangent of A, tangent of B. The tangent of A minus B is going to be the tangent of A minus the tangent of B divided by 1 plus the tangent of A, tangent of B. And you do need to know these formulas here. They will not be given to you. Neither will the double angle identities here but I will be giving you the um, product to sum that we have here. And we have sum to product here. Okay, and those will be what I give you. Please be aware of that. As we continue along, I'm just going to go ahead and continue, like I said, where I left off. And uh, once again, I apologize for uh, having to jump around a little bit but uh, hopefully you don't mind too much. So I'm going to look at this as the cosine as a sum, 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. I recommend you always think about it in the most easiest form possible. For example, if you look at the sine of uh, pi over 12, you might want to look at it as 30 degrees divided by 2 and look at the half angle identity for sine. Or perhaps you want to look at it as the difference of sine and call it the sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. That would also give you 15 degrees, which is what this is representing. So if you don't like working with ra uh, ra uh, the radians, convert it into degrees and then look for something that's easy to work with. Alrighty, so in this first one, if I have cosine of 45 plus 30, I'm looking at the cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees. It's got the opposite sign in between. And I have the sine of 45 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. This is going to give me root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 minus root 2 over 2 times 1 half. Notice knowing your identities is fundamental here. And without knowing your identities, this will be very difficult. You will not have a calculator to work with. Since they have the common denominator over 4, my answer is root 6 minus two, root 2 over 4. Next, I'm going to look at this tangent as a 45 divided by 2, which I believe to be the easiest. I'm then going to work with the formula sine of 45 degrees divided by 1 plus the cosine of 45 degrees. As I do this, I then have root 2 over 2 divided by 1 plus root 2 over 2. This is going to give me root 2 over 2 divided by 2 plus root 2 over the common denominator of 2. Now, because they both have the common denominator of 2, I can multiply by 2 over 2. This will eliminate 
the twos in the denominators, and I'm now looking at root two divided by two plus root two. Multiplying by my conjugate pair, two minus root two, two minus root two, I end up getting two root two minus two divided by four minus two. When I then simplify this, I get my answer, and that's going to be root 2, 2 root 2 divided by 2, uh, minus uh, 2 divided by 2, and that's root 2 minus 1. And that's my answer for number 9. For number uh, 10, working with this as the difference, and once again, I did convert mine into radians, so I have pi over 4 and I'm subtracting pi over 6. This is going to give me the sine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6. I have minus cosine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 6. This is root 2 over 2. I have root 3 over 2, minus root 2 over 2, times 1 half. And that gives me root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. Once again, that's my answer. Number, th number 11 here, I'm working with the half angle identity. And I'm looking at my uh, theta lies in quadrant 2. And that's where I'm going to find all of my information. Now be aware, the tangent of theta divided by 2 is going to be in the second half of quadrant 1. In 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So I have a 4, a 5, a negative 3, and I'm going to need to find my two pieces. After all, I intend to use for the tangent sine of uh, theta divided by 1 plus the cosine of theta, and therefore my sine of theta, which was given, is pi over 5, or pardon, 4 over 5, and the cosine of theta is going to end up being negative 3 fifths. I'm going to do a direct substitution, 4 fifths divided by 1 minus 3 fifths, getting the common denominator is giving me 4 fifths divided by 5 minus 3 divided by 5, and I now have 4 fifths divided by 2 fifths. As before, by multiplying by 5 over 5, the fifths goes away, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. That is my answer to number 11. Finding all of my solutions to 2 x, uh, cosine x root 3 plus root 3 equals 0. I'm going to start by solving. I get negative root 3 over 2 for the cosine. And we know that this is in the second quadrant at 5 pi over 6 or um, 150 degrees. And the second possibility is going to be 7 pi over 6 or 210 degrees. Now, once I have this, I have to make sure that I add my period times, pi, uh, times k. So in this case, 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, or 150 degrees plus 360 degrees k. And then I have 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, or I have 210 degrees plus 360 degrees K. And you only want one of these pairs. So you're either doing those two in radians, or you're doing these two in degrees. Now, it was the next problem that I had, uh, I accidentally made a mistake in class. And when I was going through it, I decided to try a different way. I felt very strongly that I had made an error, and I did want to double check it. So I decided to work with my sum formulas for sine and my difference formula for sine. That meant that I have the sine of x, cosine of pi. And then I have plus the cosine of x, sine of pi, plus the sine of x, cosine of pi. And then I have minus the cosine of x, sine of pi. And it equals root 3. Now, in this, I can clearly see that these two are opposites and go away, and I can add these two together to give me 2 sine of x cosine of pi, equaling root 3. Because the cosine of x is negative 1, 
I'm looking at negative 2 sine of x equals root 3, and therefore the sine of x is equal to root 3 over negative 2. And I'm now finding all of my solutions. I know that this would be 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. That's in radians. And if I'm looking at uh, degrees, it would be 240 degrees, and I would have um, 300 degrees. Putting them in terms of uh, all solutions, 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, or 240 degrees plus 360 degrees k, and then I would have, uh, for this next piece, 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, or I would have 300 degrees plus 360 degrees k. And once again, you only want your pair, either those two in radians or those two in degrees. The last group of questions that we have for today uh, for this pretest, number three, is finding all solutions in terms of pi for the cosecant of cosecant squared x minus uh, 2. Um, and then we'd find all of our solutions. And I'm just going to have to speed this up because the bell is about to ring. And I want you to get these solutions. So I first factored. This gave me cosecant x plus root 2, cosecant x minus root 2 by, complete, by factoring the difference of squares. I set each equal to 0 and then solve for the cosecant of x. And I find where is the cosecant x negative root 2 and where is the cosecant of x positive root 2. This is the reciprocal of the sine at 45 degrees or pi over 4. And in terms of radians, I have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. In number 15, I'm finding my solution. So when is the sine equal to 1 half? This would be pi over 6 in radians and 5 pi over 6 in the second quadrant in radians. I set them equal to the 2x, and don't forget to add your 2 pi k. I divide by 2. I get pi over 12 plus pi k and 5 pi over 12 plus pi k. I then have pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12 and 17 pi over 12. Notice, if I add more, I go outside of my unit circle. Finding all of my solutions in terms of uh, uh, 0 to 2 pi, so they're in radians, I first factor. This is simply a quadratic. Factoring the quadratic gives me 3 tangent x minus root 3, tangent x plus root 3. I take each and I set them equal to 0 and solve. And I find that I get pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. The last one requires me to find my two angles, u and v, in the appropriate quadrant. And then once you do, choose your tangent. Uh, either do sine of u plus v uh, over cosine of u plus v, or I do tangent of u plus v. I find my ratios. I put them into... Um, the formula that you choose, and then simplify. I ended up getting negative uh, four-thirds after I used all of my ratios and plugged them in directly. Thank you very much. This has been the pretest number three, part two. I hope that this has helped. If you like it, please remember to click like. Thank you very much and be well. Bye-bye now.